Hey friends, I'm sitting down to watch the remake of the 1987 horror classic Hellraiser. You opened the box. We came. Now, please sub subscribe to the channel. Or like the video. Tell your friends. I was a Clive Barker fan before Hellraiser came out in 87. And I read the book. I'm a bigger fan of the book than the movie. Uh, the, the Hellraiser franchise is amazing. Hellraiser and Hellraiser 2 are awesome. Hellraiser 3 jumped a shark. And then the later Hellraiser movies were hit or miss. But they were really weird and experimental. And I think they got back to that gritty vibe. Um, but they didn't recapture that initial magic of meeting the, the Cenobites for the first time on film. I have uh, several things with me. I have my Lament configuration. I have my... Hellraiser movie trading cards. The complete set. You could probably get it for like 11 bucks on eBay. Um, and of course, the paperback I initially read of The Hellbound Heart. Fantastic book. Now, it is incredible that this book, um, you know, written by Clive Barker, inspired the movie that was written and directed by Clive Barker. And... Um, they're, they're very similar, but they're very different. These are different worlds. They're almost parallel universes of one another. And um, both are brilliant, but the book is magic. There's a special magic in this. And I also have my uh, 25th anniversary or 20th anniversary edition of uh, Hellbound Heart done by Earthling Publications. Now, there is going to be a Suntup limited edition of... Hellbound Heart, which is going to be a whole lot of magic as well. But this I have signed by three out of the four Cenobites and the woman who played Kirsty in the original movie. So I need Doug Bradley's signature for this book. Um, this is stellar. And then lastly, I am accompanied with my Funko Pop of Pinhead. Um, now, while Pinhead is uh, similar across all movies... This is the Hellraiser 3 version. And like I said, uh, the only Hellraiser movie that I thought was garbage. Uh, I did collect the comic books. I have an extensive line of Hellraiser comic books. I even got the, the comic books that were not really connected to the Hellraiser series. The goofy ones that Marvel did. Um, but yes, I've been a Hellraiser fan for a long time. Now, I don't know what to expect from this movie. Uh, my expectations are high because I saw the trailer and it looked marvelous. It looked excellent. Uh, I think the woman who plays uh, the Hell Priest, I hate saying Pinhead because Pinhead is a pejorative. The woman who plays the lead Cenobite, it looks to do a stunning, terrifying job. And um, I, I'm really looking forward to what she brings to the to the role um other than that i don't know so we'll see we're i'm gonna do uh, reactions while i watch and then i'll do a recap at the end let's hope for the best so i made it to the pre-title sequence and i dig it i think it's interesting there's a lot of faith uh i'm i'm extending to this movie because they've changed quite a bit there's it's not a strict remake of the original, which I guess it said reimagining in the thing. Um, so it's it's not a <laughs> it's not a, a it's not a simple remake. So um, it, it's interesting what they've added. I think there are a bit of things in the comic books that also allow them to go out this way and still be part of the Hellraiser canon. Um, really interesting, really interesting. Um, some clunky acting, but you know what? Let's, uh, let's just keep going. Uh, the character who I think was kind of rough, uh, <laughs> he's gone now. So we don't have to worry about him anymore and we can, we can watch the rest of this. Um, some of those things are pretty forgivable, um, and I do dig that they went with the old school title for Hellraiser. When that comes up, uh, the pre-title sequence, then the title, the title is just gives you chills. So I hope they live up to it. They better live up to it.
So I think it's pretty interesting how they made the Lament configuration just slightly more dangerous, you know, initially. It's not, uh, it, it, had, it, it was always dangerous once you solved it, but how you solve it and how you are some, how you are tagged by the Cenobites is a little different. Um, and that's kind of interesting. I think I like what they're doing with the material and I think it's all fair game. But again, this feels more like something in the extended universe, maybe something in the comic books than in uh, the book or the movie, the original. Another thing I'm digging about this version is that they already have the introduction to the fans about what the Cenobites represent. So they don't really need to rehash that. Maybe they will. Maybe they'll give an explanation about who the Cenobites are and that they're travelers from other dimensions and they're demons to some, angels to others, all that stuff. But they haven't done that so far. They're still pretty mysterious and I'm 45 minutes into it. I got an hour and 15 minutes left, so I don't know what remains. At about an hour into it, we finally meet the lead Cenobite. And damn, I think they're doing more with, <laughs> uh, with the torture part. Like in, uh, in the first one, People get a lot of hooks and they get torn apart and there's skinning and then there's, you know, all that stuff. But this is a little more intimate and a little more tense, um, I think, at least this first interaction with the lead Cenobite. So um, I'm very interested to see where it goes from here. The only thing I'm not really digging as much so far is um, is the cast. It feels like... They got a bunch of kids, sort of a Scooby-Doo type mystery solvers. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if that's fair. And that's not really a ding. That's just sort of my flavor right now. It seems in this version, the Cenobites don't care who opened it or who they get. In the first one, Cenobites were very intensely interested in who called them because they were about customer service. And they were like, oh, did you call us? Oh, maybe you didn't. You solved the box, we showed up, and then, you know, Kirsty was able to talk to them that she didn't want them and that she could give them Frank. And so they were they were going to take whoever opened the box, but they really wanted the person to buy the service. And this one, they're like, ah, we don't care. We'll just take you. Chatterer! So I just finished watching and initial reaction to this movie is I loved it. I thought the female lead Cenobite was amazing. She was awesome. She was the stellar best part of this reimagining. And the story was good. The story uh, was interesting. They took some liberties with um, the, the Lament configuration and and how it's solved and what it means once it's solved and a whole sort of new bargain that the Cenobites make, um, which was interesting and and not a breach of, <laughs> of canon, right? So it's not like I saw that and I'm like, that's not raw, that's stupid. No, I liked it. I think that's, that's to be expected. You want an evolution. You want, um, uh, you want the story to move along. And as someone who's read a lot of the comic books, uh, there has always been in Barker approved, in the Barker approved universe anyway, uh, <clears throat> certain liberties taken with the storyline and these people that enter into bargains. I also forgot to mention the gore in this movie is more intense. I talked about the torture aspect being more intimate and tense. But the gore isn't just splatter buckets of red liquid. It's, it's pretty intense. So just be ready for that. Uh, I'm not going to say a whole lot more about that. But also the music, because near the end, they either used the Christopher Young Hellraiser soundtrack or they did a really good 
tribute to it because it sounds very similar. I think uh, the atmosphere of Hellraiser, the original one, and Hellraiser 2 uh, owed a lot to that Christopher Young soundtrack. And I think they used it in this one as well. There's also a lot of really great sound um, design in the first part of the movie. But toward the end, when the Cenobites are really playing with the people, uh, you're getting a lot more uh, of that original flavor of the music. So that's two things that I think they actually improved upon with this movie. Just an initial reaction. A plus to the acting of the Cenobites. I love the Cenobite designs. Uh, I would recommend anybody watching the movie, watch it in a dark room because if you have too much light in the room, you might not see it very well. It's a very dark movie. So, um, and I watched like in the middle of the day. So I think I'd like to rewatch it in a darker environment so I could see more of the screen. So that's just a technical, that's a technical housekeeping thing that, Obviously, Hulu can't control. Um, the only thing I didn't dig uh, at first was the acting of of Riley. I kind of was sour on it. She seemed to be a pouty, um, unlikable character. I think toward the end, uh, I, I changed my opinion. But in the, at least in the first half... I didn't connect with that character. She sort of annoyed me. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, but that, that came around. So overall, I would give this movie probably four out of five stars. Maybe 4.5. It's it's something I want to watch again for sure. Definitely far from a disappointment. I think they did great things with the lore. It does get at the same things, the same themes of the original story. So obsession, addiction, loss, grief, all those things are mined to good effect in this movie. So thumbs up. Go watch it with confidence. Um, hopefully I didn't do any spoilers in this whole thing. You know, you're talking about it with, with what's in your brain. And I hope I didn't uh, unleash, let any uh, genies out of the bottle or Cenobites out of the lament configuration. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. It's a great Halloween month movie. I know producer Jill liked it. I didn't expect her to. But um, so go go check it out with uh, Beef Daddy's blessing. Beef Daddy said go ahead. And uh, up next for a movie review will be Halloween Ends. I'm going to hate watch it. So um, stay tuned for that. And as always, stay frosty.